In this assembly guide, we'll be putting together the new B1 battle droids from Star Wars Legion. Hello there, and welcome to Zorbazor Gaming. My name's Lachlan Linton Keen, and today we're going to be assembling the new B1 battle droids from the Clone Wars range of Star Wars Legion. Now, these new B1s are the first kind of iteration of a new range of products or a new manufacturing process over at Fantasy Flight Games using hard plastic on the sprue to cram our models full of detail. We're basically starting to approach that Games Workshop level of detail in our Fantasy Flight Game miniatures, which is absolutely amazing. They are so gorgeous just to paint as we've seen in the painting tutorial already which I'll link down in the description below but there is a little bit more to them when it comes to assembly. So in this guide we're going to be covering how to get them off the sprue, how to clean them up and how to get them looking absolutely amazing. Uh, of course they're on sprue, they're a lot more multi-parts. We've also got a lot of opportunity to get really clever and creative and create some pretty cool variation in our droids so that every single droid doesn't look the same and we can get a little bit of character and a little bit of that dynamic action into our posing which is tremendously exciting. We all know that I love to go pretty crazy uh, in terms of posing and making sure no models look the same So there's a lot of opportunity for us to do that here So without further ado, let's dive on over to the hobby desk whip out some droid B1 sprues and start assembling these bad boys and getting them ready to take the fight to the Republic so in each set of droids, you're going to be faced with a number of sprues. The first two are identical. These square sprues have each got enough components on them for two droids, so that gives us four standard battle droids. This second and largest sprue has enough poses for another two battle droids, including a few more dynamic and diversified ones, like our kneeling droid, but it's also got the components for our leader, including some binoculars and some extra kind of antennas and aerials and an extra gun that goes on his back. Then our third sprue is our special or heavy weapon sprues which has the E60R and the E5C. Now if you look at each sprue in detail, every single component is labelled with an alphanumeric code. The letters correspond to each specific droid pose on the sprue, so all of the parts for droid pose A will be labelled A1, A2, A3 and so on. These labels are quite useful for helping you assemble all of your droids to the desired assembly patterns, but they are by no means a limitation, which we'll dive into a bit later. Now the first thing we're going to have a look at is just assembling some basic droids, and the whole assembly process is pretty much exactly the same for every single pose, we just sort of trick it up with a few different options and weapons. So to start with, we're going to grab one of our basic frames, the square smaller frame with our normal droid poses, and start to remove the components for one droid from the sprue. Now you're going to need a couple of tools for this kind of model preparation process. I've got a nice sharp scalpel, a small file, and then a pair of clippers. As you take each piece off the sprue, it's also important that you clean up the area of flash or scrag that is left on the model from where it was joined to the sprue. Usually I like to use my scalpel to just chip away or take off all of the big chunks and then grab my small file to just sort of smooth that edge over and make sure it's nice and blended seamlessly with the original plastic. You just want to make sure you don't go too crazy with this step and accidentally take chunks of detail or file away lovely bits of the model that are supposed to be there, so just make sure you take your time and pay due diligence. Once you've taken all of the components off the sprue, you'll notice that we have two legs, a torso, two arms, the head in two components, and a backpack. Now, uh, all of the droids are basically built in this exact same way, uh, and they're all designed to go together really easily, but there's a few tricks that you can use in your assembly process which makes the build a lot more easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by assembling the legs and the torso, mounting that to the base, and building myself a nice solid working frame to go from, and then we can start to add on the arms, the legs, the backpacks, and all of the extra details. But in my experience, there's something about the plastic of these bases, uh, and also just plastic on plastic, it, whenever you're playing with these models you'll knock one off the table and they'll just pop straight off their base. So I always like to bring a bit of physical bonding in to the basing of these models. So what we're going to do is pin these models with some brass rod. So I'm going to grab my pin vise, which is a small modelling drill, and I'm going to drill a very small hole, just one millimetre wide, in the bottom of one of the feet. Now this is a very tricky process on the droids, unlike the clones who have these nice kind of big wide feet, the droids are very 
very dainty and we've got to make sure that we don't damage any detail. So we want to sit that pin vise drill bit in the exact center of the foot arch. You can use the little ridge there to help you keep the pin vise drill bit in the right place. And we want to gently drill up, making sure that we don't accidentally drill all the way through the foot. You'll notice as your drill bit is coming to the surface, it might start to go white as it plastically deforms. If you see any whiteness, stop drilling. You're about to drill the droid's foot in half. Once you've got that little hole, we're going to slide in a piece of one millimeter brass rod and clip that down until you've got sort of three or four millimeters hanging underneath the foot and that has become our mounting pin. Because our legs are in their final pose we can position exactly where we want those legs to stand and we'll know where we need to drill a corresponding hole on the model's base. So what we want to do is grab some plastic glue because these are of course nice hard plastic models which will react perfectly to a plastic cement and we want to put a small piece of glue on each of the hip joints on the torso piece. It's always important to put your glue on the protruding element of the biscuit join rather than putting glue into the hole because that stops you from putting too much glue on the model which will then be smooshed out all over your pieces and obscure and melt detail. And then we're going to glue this all up together using a different glue to our plastic glue. We're going to use some cyanoacrylate super glue because we're gluing metal and plastic here and we want a really strong bond that binds that pinning element whereas our plastic cement wouldn't do anything to the brass pin. Once you've glued those feet down, you can see we've got a really nice solid platform to start adding our details. So the next thing we're going to do is assemble the droid's arms. I like to do this next because it allows us to kind of define the whole shape of the piece and that will help us motivate which way we want the head facing and all of the other details. Now for most of these droids the arms are basically the same, they're all just slightly changed at different angles. On the one hand we have the right arm which has all of the arm, the hands and the weapon and on that weapon is also already fixed the left hand and then on our left arm we just have that shoulder and forearm join which is then ready to be glued at the wrist. So what we're going to do is join those two pieces together before we glue them to the torso. So just grab that left arm and put a very small piece of plastic cement on that incomplete wrist join and place that firmly against the hand component that is already gripping the blaster, making sure that you're keeping that wrist at 90 degrees so that join is nice and strong. So we'll just sit that to the side and we're going to glue on the backpack. What you want to do is just put a very small drop of plastic cement in the center of the backpack's join. You don't want to go too crazy otherwise it will spill out all over the torso and melt away those details and then we're just going to put that exactly on the center of the back of the droid and there's really only one place that the backpack will sit so that it's perfectly flush with the smooth curve of those droid shoulders. Now that our backpack's down, we're going to grab our plastic cement and put a couple of small dots of glue on our two shoulder joints on the torso. And then we're going to grab our two arms and we'll press them gently together, pushing the sides of the shoulders onto those shoulder joints. Now you'll see that these are more of a traditional ball joint, which allows for a lot more posability for the droid arm. So you just want to press those two shoulder joints together, get the exact elevation of the weapon that you like, and then let it grab for 10 to 15 seconds before you let it go. So the droid's head actually comes in two small pieces and there's a trick that you can do to get this together nice and easily without accidentally covering it with glue. I like to grab the back half and put a very small drop of glue on the kind of open cross-sectional face of that back half of the head and then grab the front section, the longer section, join it at the very top and roll that join together closed so that all the excess glue gets forced to the underside of the head and already fills that cavity that you're going to sit on the ball joint that is the neck. So just press those pieces gently together at the top, roll them closed, all the glue will flow down into that cavity and then you can just drop the head straight on the top of the neck and you can position that head anywhere you like. For this model I'm going to have him looking down the side and blasting at some clone troopers. And that is our first droid finished. You can see it's not a particularly complicated process. Uh, you could definitely do a whole lot of kind of batch assembly to really smash it out quickly which we'll have a look at a little bit later getting those fast build techniques. But but for now what I'm going to do is just assemble the other droid on this sprue in the exact same manner so that we can see what the two default droid poses look like straight out of the box. So there we have our first two droids assembled. Now you can see there are some subtle variations in the posing. You know, one leg is more of a stand and deliver, whilst one of the other leg pieces is a bit more of a walking pose. But there's not a great deal of variety, and you'll start to notice this in the droid kits. If you're not careful, you can get some poses that are very samey. I mean, 
out of the box you already have some exact repetition of poses. There are two sprues here that are exactly the same, which means you'll have two sets of identical droids. So what I'm going to do when I'm assembling the next pair of this square smaller sprue is start swapping the components over. I'm going to glue together all of the legs and torsos and backpacks exactly as we just did, but I'm going to take the arms from one droid and swap them with the other droid. Now you can do this completely universally with all of the droid components, and it's a great way to just add a a little bit of difference to all of your droids just by mixing up all of the arms as long as you keep the left hand and the right hand together you're not going to have any great difficulty in matching those because they all just go onto those same torso ball joints that mount the shoulders. And now we have four droids that all look subtly different. I've also done a few little kind of differences with the angle of the head. Instead of having them all firing, one of them looks like he's a bit more of a, a mid-run and looking over his right shoulder. So you can do a lot of different subtle changes with the changes of the weapons, the arms, and of course the head angle to really bring a little bit of extra character into your basic droid poses. So now that we understand the basic assembly process of these droids, off camera I've done a batch assembly of the remaining five poses. Now we know that we have three droids that come on that more expanded sprue with the leader details, and we also have two more droids on the special weapon sprue, so that gives us five poses, and all the legs and torsos have been mounted together, but I've left off all of the arms and all of the backpacks and extra bits and pieces. So let's have a look at how we can bring some real interest to these remaining five droid poses. So the next phase of the batch build process is to clip off all of our arm components and align them with their original intended recipients. Now all those components have been separated from the sprue, we're going to glue together the pairs of left and right arms for each of those droid poses. Now they're almost all the, exactly the same uh, as the first two droids we did, with the exception of the missile launcher and the leader droid who is holding his binoculars. For the rocket launcher, the angle of the left hand joining the right is just a little different because obviously the rocket is up over his shoulder, so you want to make sure that you get that nice and flush, and the easiest way to check that you're lining them up correctly is that you should still have those two shoulders being being perfectly parallel, just imagine you're going to have that torso sitting in there, so you want to have those hands in the right place. For the binoculars, it's exactly the same thing. The two droid wrist joints are going to be exactly opposite each other because he's holding those binoculars out in front of him, so just make sure you get those hands glued in the right place and you don't use too much glue because you don't want to spill any of that plastic glue all over those droid fingers. So I've actually already assembled one squad of clankers that are exactly following the assembly pattern of the box art, so I want to make this squad nice and different just like I did in the assembly guide with my clone troopers. Now the first one I'm going to start with is the E60R, the big rocket launcher, and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with my clone troopers, and I'm going to give the big heavy weapon to the crouching or kneeling droid. The first thing we need to do is give this rocket launcher a barrel, because you'll notice that in the original sculpt, it's just kind of flat-ended. It doesn't have any kind of additional barrel detail. So we're going to drill that out with our pin vise. Now before we grab the pin vise and start kind of just plowing away at the model, we want to make sure we get this hole in the exact center of the barrel so that it doesn't look stupid or any kind of off-kilter element. So what we're going to do is grab our scalpel, line that tip of the blade up in the very center of the rocket launcher's barrel, and then just slowly carve away a small hole which will be a great place for us to rest the pin vise uh, so that we can, you know, get the, get the drill bit in the right spot and use more control of the scalpel to make sure that it stays there. Once you've made that hole with the scalpel, I just grab my one millimeter drill bit with the pin vise and just make it a little bit deeper, and then I'm going to swap to a much larger drill bit that's sort of probably almost two to three mil thick uh, to drill out quite a nice thick missile sized hole in this missile launcher's barrel. I'm, you don't have to go like really deep, I like to go you know probably at least five mil down into the rocket so that you know it's all going to be painted black, you're not going to be seeing directly in there, you just want it deep enough that you know it provides the illusion of that big missile barrel. Once the barrel hole is done, I just grab my scalpel and just kind of smooth over that edge and kind of curve it out a little bit, just so that it doesn't look like a really obvious harsh drill. It makes it look like a bit of, little bit more of a rounded kind of gradient, uh, which will help make that drill look a little bit more natural. So time to glue our E60R wielding arms to our torso. So once again, we'll just put a little bit of glue on each of those round joins on the shoulders, and we're gonna press those two arms together. Now the E60R is a little bit heavier than a normal blaster, and it will sort of droop if you don't hold it there. So what I sort of did was picked the exact level that I wanted that rocket launcher to sit at. This guy's just gonna be firing it, so nice and dead straight. And then I just went off camera and just left him sitting against something with something propping up the barrel until that dried for sort of like five to 10 minutes. 
minutes and then I went and started assembling some other models. Uh, that way you know that glue will be nice and strong before we come back and we glue on the head and then we have to glue on our rocket sight. Now this is on the sprue here, you can see it's just a small little additional component and when you clip it off the sprue it, it leaves quite a large flash mark on that really flat surface so you just might want to carve that away with your scalpel or your file just to make sure that that's nice and flush and smooth and doesn't show any of the mold lines or the scrag and then just pop a little bit of glue on the small end of that and slide that into the main rocket barrel. You'll see the mounting point, it's very obvious there's quite a large cavity and it fits quite seamlessly. For the last special weapon, the E5C, I chose to give it to more of a, a walking, lunging pose uh, than the kind of standard deliver pose that it comes with out of the box. Uh, just to give my, you know, I like my special weapons to have a little bit more of a dynamic impact. They're the models that I'm often keeping around because, you know, they're the best. So I just want to make them really stand out. So I just gave him to a pose that had a little bit more of a lean and a little bit more dynamic movement in it. And then as always, chuck on a backpack and chuck on his head. Uh, and for him, I've decided to have him looking straight down the barrel and laying down some cover fire for the rest of his squad. The other difference with the E5C is that he also has a battle rifle that is clipped to his backpack. So I just put a little bit of glue on that large flat tab that sticks out the side of the rifle and then that slots in and hooks underneath and glues to the underside of his backpack. And then he is complete. Now the final model that has a few extra special details is of course our leader. Now in my last leader pose I had him kind of doing the classic stare down the binoculars on those really tall spindly legs so this time I've decided to give him a bit more of a, uh, a dynamic pose and he's dropped his binoculars like he's having a bit of a, a manual scout and having a look around before he clocks a target to put his binoculars up and it's just it's really easy you just glue the exact same joints to the shoulder joints and just rotate that hand down and it looks completely different from that leader and gives you a nice point of difference between your two squads. The final two details for our leader are of course he doesn't have a backpack, he's actually got a little custom aerial mounting and then his own battle rifle hooked on his back. So the aerial mount has a slightly angled face which uh, aligns perfectly with the gradient of the torso on the left shoulder. So just use a little bit of glue to tack that in place. It's really handy just to have a look at the box art to make sure you get it at the exact right elevation. And then his battle rifle glues differently uh, to the way that our last battle rifle glued for the E5C Trooper. So what you want to do here is put a little bit of glue on the top of the gun as well as on that tab and then you can mount that on the right side of his back shoulder blade and then it kind of leans over and clicks in uh, with the aerial mount for a really solid lock which means that gun won't go bouncing off anywhere. For the remaining two droids, I just glued them together exactly as we did the first two, and that brings us to the completion of our first B1 Battle Droid squad. You can see there's a lot of kind of variation and dynamic posing, there's no repetition, we've got a lot of character in these really gorgeous sculpts, and I'm super happy with how they've turned out. I especially love the kneeling rocket launcher, he's a good favourite of mine, uh, and I actually quite like the leader too, I love the idea of just, it's just a simple modelling choice of dropping those arms and him kind of panning and scouting around, but it actually means we get to kind of read a bit more into his face and see his yellow detailing. So it's, uh, yeah, it's quite a nice choice and I'm really happy with how they've turned out. So there we have it, guys. I mean, there's a little bit more work involved, but it's certainly not incredibly complicated. It's very manageable. And what you get for the extra little bit of effort in terms of assembly is some pretty amazing poses and some absolutely amazing quality plastic with really great details. So I'm stoked that Fantasy Flight have made this move to the hard plastic landscape that I'm used to from sort of Games Workshop and other gaming systems. We get a lot more quality a lot more detail, the durability of the miniatures is still great, and of course no bendy guns with the soft plastic which drives me up the wall. So yeah, a great move from Fantasy Flight here and I can't wait to see what else we've got. We've obviously got Droidikers and a couple of other uh, interesting units in the Clone Wars range that we have at the moment which are using this new half plastic, uh, and we've also got, you know, a lot more stuff on the way as well, which is presumably going to be using hard plastic as well. So exciting times in terms of modelling and assembly here at Fantasy Flight Games. So yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely stoked with this move and I can't wait to see where they go next with their miniature creation. Do you guys enjoy the poses that I created? Do you like the way my squads come together? Uh, if you've got any other suggestions on guides, either painting or assembly, that you'd love to see, drop it all down in the comment section below. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it and definitely subscribe if you're new around here. We've got a whole lot of Star Wars Legion content planned and we're building up our backlog of painting and assembly guides as well, so there's lots more to enjoy. In the meantime, get back to your hobby desks and start putting together those droids. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time here at Zorbazorb Gaming. Cheers, guys.